It has been over two weeks into the Hamas-Israel war and amidst all the devastation, there are finally some positive developments. Hamas has released two American hostages and there is hope that the much-needed aid can finally reach Gaza. But even as this happens, threat for an escalation continues. But first, let's tell you about the positives. Hamas has released two American hostages. It's a mother and daughter duo. The release has been secured through Qatar's mediation efforts. While the Israeli Defense Forces say it's the military pressure that led to this, the White House claims that the U.S. was quote-unquote very much involved in the release. President Joe Biden has spoken to the two released Americans. These two women were among over 200 hostages that are held captive by Hamas. Jewish and Israeli organization have created a stark reminder of, of the hostages. An empty Shabbat table has been installed in the plaza outside the Tel Aviv Museum of Art with a place setting for each confirmed missing person. Families of the hostages participated in the symbolic dinner as they await the return of their loved ones. U.S. President Joe Biden has said that he believes that aid would reach Gaza in the next 24 to 48 hours. This after a commitment from the Israelis and the president of Egypt as part of a diplomatic breakthrough regarding aid passing through the Rafah crossing. On the other hand, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres visited the crossing on Friday. He appealed for aid trucks to move into the besieged Gaza Strip. At the same time, new satellite images show trucks with humanitarian aid gathered on the Egyptian side of the Rafah crossing with Gaza. Speaking about the likely the ground offensive as per Israel's economy minister, the military has the green light to launch a ground invasion. The minister stressed that the primary goal of the ground operation is to eliminate Hamas off the map. However, the U.S. and its allies have been urging Israel to be strategic and clear about its goal on the ground invasion of Gaza. They have warned against a prolonged occupation and have stressed on avoiding civilian casualties. This was done as part of private discussions with Western defense officials or with Western defense officials with their Israeli counterparts. Meanwhile, a Gaza hospital says it faces imminent threat of airstrike from Israeli army. The administration of Al-Qad's hospital in Gaza says the Israeli army has contacted them demanding the immediate evacuation of the hospital in preparation for a nighttime airstrike. On the international front, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has called on Israel to stop its attacks on Gaza. Erdogan said that Israeli attacks amount to a genocide. He has also urged governments worldwide to work for humanitarian ceasefire in the region. Also, what we know at this hour, the Israeli army on Friday displayed a large cache of weapons and supplies obtained from Hamas militants amid the attack on October 7th. The weapons seized included Hamas's grenades, landmines, and rocket-propelled grenades. Now, according to a major general of the Israeli army, the weapons on display only made up 10% of total seized. Well, he says Hamas fighters only managed to use 30% of their weapons during the attack against Israel. And for more on this, we are now being joined live by Lester Manson, who is a senior fellow at the National Security Institute and a principal international at BGR Group, which is a leading government relations firm in Washington, D.C. Lester is joining us live from Washington, D.C. Lester, welcome to the show. Pleased to be with you. There is fear of a massacre as staff patients refuse Israeli order to evacuate al Qad's hospital. Israeli forces are relentless in their efforts to fight Hamas, but Gazans or Palestinians are caught up in the war. In your view, is there a way this could be done differently by the outraged Israeli government? 
Well, I think it's important to remember that uh, there are ongoing attacks into Israel from Gaza right now. Uh, Hamas continues to fire rockets into civilian areas inside Israel, uh, continues to target Israel's civilian population as it did so egregiously just two weeks ago. Uh, so I think it's it's important we remember that there, that Hamas continues to attack Israel. I think Israel is actually showing great restraint thus far in its actions. Uh, the hostage release earlier today, as you were talking about, uh, is a is a positive sign, but it's a very small one. Uh, there can there are uh, up to 200 other hostages still being held, and uh, from what I understand. There had been a discussion about releasing 50 hostages. That seems to have not worked, at least not yet. Uh, so I think given all of all of these facts and the fact that uh, Hamas continues to attack Israel, Israel is actually showing enormous restraint thus far. Lester, Hamas releasing hostages, is this a good sign of days to come? Well, you know, it can be. Uh, frankly, I think it needs to be a lot more hostages and it needs to be done a lot more quickly. There is there is a time element here, and uh, I don't think the Israelis will wait uh, that much longer before they do what they need to do with Hamas. Uh, so this hostage situation, if Gutter is going to play a critical role here, they need to do it quickly. They need to move fast. Uh, these releases should be unconditional. Frankly, it's it's appalling that these folks are held hostage at all. Uh, so really something needs to happen quickly here, or I'm afraid the it'll actually, it may provoke uh, a quicker invasion from Israel than, than Hamas was suspecting. Lester, there's another frontier that is proving to be a problem, and that is Lebanon. If Hezbollah or Iran, for that matter, decides to join the war in the guise of backing the Palestinian cause, what impact would that have on Israel and the West? Well, obviously, a two-front war is much more difficult to fight than a one-front war. So if, if there is action in the north, uh, Israel's defense forces will be stretched a little more thinly. I do think they're prepared for that. Uh, Israel, while it was taken unawares a couple of weeks ago by the terrorist attack from Hamas, uh, it's whatever naivete it may have had is surely gone at this point. So I suspect Israel is very prepared for a Hezbollah incursion. And I think the purpose of President Biden visiting Israel, warning, effectively warning Iran and Hezbollah not to attack Israel, the presence of uh, uh, a U.S. aircraft carrier group with another one coming off the coast of Israel is a very strong sign that an expansion of this war could lead to more direct U.S. involvement. We've already seen the U.S. Navy shoot down missiles from Yemen that were aimed at Israel from uh, the Houthis in Yemen, uh, who were evidently attacking Israel, presumably at the behest of Iran, which is their patron. Uh, so this this war is complex. It may expand. I think the, the presence of U.S. forces there should have a mitigating factor for that expansion. Lester, finally, and I want your brief uh, response to this one. There's an emergency peace summit to be held in Egypt. Some say it's a farce because Egypt and Arab countries have refused to allow desperate Palestinians into their country. But in your view, is Israel likely to listen to these leaders that will be participating in the forum? I think the reality is on the ground that Israel is very interested in talking to its neighbors. The, neighbor, the neighboring countries, Egypt, Jordan, and others are as concerned about Palestinian terrorism as Israel is. They're less likely to say it in public, of course. But in the reality is behind the scenes is the Israeli government and these other uh, governments, mostly Arab governments, are speaking to each other quite frequently. That is a good thing, and that can help limit how, how big this war becomes. Uh, and so I think that's to be encouraged. And, and it's and good for you for pointing out that uh, these Arab countries need to do more as well on the humanitarian front. I've been talking to Lester Manson, who is a senior fellow at the National Security Institute and a principal international at BGR Group, which is a leading government relations firm in Washington, D.C. Lester, thank you very much for giving us time today and to for talking to us on We On World is One. You're very welcome. Thank you. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.